Um, this is Ian D. Quadros from uh, Tiger Mendoza again. Um, so the last video I did, uh, so this is a track called, um, I called it Oxford Viewer Italy, I think, or Italy Viewer Oxford. Um, samples taken from citiesandmemory.com. Um, and the last video I did was how I put the drum rack together. This video is on the tune samples, so the basses, the pads, the lead. Um, and I'll show you what I did with the vocal uh, effects as well in the track. So let's start with the pads. Uh, we'll start with the lower pads. Um, so what I did for these was find a sample in the uh, in the uh, uh, samples from I was given, um, which I thought could be tuned in some way and therefore could become a pad or a lead in its own right. So this one is from the Quakers Bridge in Oxford. So if I play the original sample, it sounds something like this. sound much like a pad at all. So what I did there was take a tiny element of it, uh, dropped it into uh, a sample, uh, or sorry, uh, Ableton sampler instrument, and then to tune it, what I used was just a um, uh, an analog device. And now there aren't a, a, the, all the instruments, all the pads you hear are are, are samples from the bound sound. You'll notice this this uh, channel, actually right on the solo, it'll make it a bit better. Um, you'll notice that A, this channel is, is blank, there's nothing playing on it. Um, and there's, the, the, the analog uh, instrument itself doesn't ever play, but what I did use it for is tuning the, the other samples. So if I play, so if I just show you what I mean, if I just play the analog, um, got my trusty MPK Mini. Oops, that doesn't want to work now, which is awesome. Uh, that one. This is a, a beep, basically. Um, not particularly nice sound, um, but then I can use that. So if I play these two together. So they're kind of in the same, uh, at the same pitch anyway. So, uh, like I say, that's off. So what I've then got is a usable, um, airy, kind of gritty pad sound, which is pretty cool. So you can see there, it's just a tiny bit. If I zoom right out, all the whole thing, I've really only used that one small sample, one small piece, and uh, created a tiny loop out of that. Um, it's supposed to make things a bit more efficient. I can right click and go to crop sample, but I didn't because I'm an idiot. Um, so a few different effects on it. I turned the gain down a little bit because it was getting a bit noisy. Um, there's filters and stuff actually in the sample, which I added just again to shape the sound a bit more. Um, what I really like is the shaper. Um, a bit of grit and uh, a bit of a slight bit of distortion on the sound, which is pretty cool. Um, and then put it through an auto filter. So this is a peak filter I used. Um, and what it does here is um, it runs through the peak filter. So if I just play actually that bar here. sidechains on the snare. So every time the snare hits, you'll hear this wowing sound because that triggers the auto filter. So if I play that one, um, if I solo that and solo the snare sound from there, you should hear sound is the snare triggering the envelope in the auto filter and you can adjust the intensity of that by changing the gain um, and um, there's a great video on, on how to use the auto filter which I'll link to in the comments um, but yeah it changes the gain um, on that and makes it that wowing sound and it does it rhythmically in terms of track which I thought was a really cool use um, 
and then that lifts the core so a bit of width and a limiter to make, pull, make sure things don't get too crazy. So that's my low pads and that has the kind of background hum and then the high pads are done in a really similar way um, similar sample from Oxford to Creighton Bridge this time I added a frequency shifter and pitch by up and so you get when you play them together like this <laughs> sound quite cool doing the right thing. Um, so that's all done from one small snippet of audio. So what else is there to show you? I can show you the lead very quickly which is done in a very similar way again. This time the sample was taken from uh, somebody, I think it's a singer, uh, a small snippet of the singer uh, from who was singing on, on Cool Market Street in Oxford and if I just play that, um, the same way if I zoom right out the tiny snippet of a much much longer sample um, EQ a little bit so I can shape the sound and really kind of hone in on the bit uh, I was going for so you do kind of the background noise which was the hardest thing about this whole thing trying to get rid of the background noise to kind of find the, the usable bit in the, in the audio spectrum um, what I did do then was to add grit to it which is what I always like um, I added a, a guitar amp actually after it to give a slight guitar -y tone and the cab which rather than so it sounds less like a mic'd up um, sample it sounds like a mic'd up um, sorry it sounds like a, a, a line out you know just a sample playing it sounds like a mic'd up instrument that makes it a bit more alive a bit more organic so I can play that sound and it's not necessarily that sound I'm playing but kind of the lead melody, it's just kind of eerie and a bit spooky, uh, if I play that together, I get, if I move that to that, like that. Uh, use the vocoder to kind of, to kind of shape the sound as well, make it sound a bit more organic, um, and the auto pan, um, something which I it's not a great example there, but something which I do with most tracks apart from the bass is the kill the sub uh, trick, which is just add a high pass filter on the end um, and basically get try and get rid of at least the last 70 or so um, hertz of, of frequency to avoid some muddiness. Or, although when you're playing with a whole bunch of found sounds, it's a bit difficult to avoid. So that was that. Uh, bass done in a really similar way again. Uh, effects used both. This time going the other way, so I wanted to focus more on the low end, but still added a bit of a shape on there. Um, used sausage fattener just to kind of fatten up the, the sound, really, I suppose. Um, so get the bass, which sounds something like this. It's a bit clicky, which I don't really like, but um, I will go with it. So that was just the arpeggio to kind of make it a bit more of a bass sound. bass part. Uh, you can just hear the singer trail off there, so I'll do that next. Um, so there was a, a somebody actually singing, which is a bit of a godsend, because I wanted a, a pitch sample that I could kind of play with and manipulate. So this singer, um, I don't know what song she was singing, um, but it sounded really nice. So if I just play, where is it? Uh, cool Market, Cool Market, that one. So I play this MP3 and just play it out. That was just a busker on Cool Market Street singing something, no idea what it was. Um, <coughs> so I put that into uh, Ableton, time stretched it, and all did loads of stuff with it, and got loads of things like this. <laughs> Uh, 
added ridiculous amounts of um, delay onto it, ping pong delay to have it swing from side to side, back to feedback right up so it got for ages. Um, I don't know why I really needed to put the do that and uh, put an EQ3 as well, but I did. Um, and then a compressor just to kind of squeeze it a bit more to really intensify the echoes and stuff. And then I kill the sub to help it fit in the mix a bit better. So what you get oops, is then, uh, if I just play all that together, you get this kind of cacophonous. Um, oh, and I put it, I turn the onto session view. Um, I loaded the samples into here and to kind of chop them up a bit. So there's three different samples. You've got this one. And then this one. And then this one. Um, so just kind of while I was making the track, just kind of jamming it really, and, and then adding a bit of variation by pressing the by triggering the samples manually. Um, so what you ended up with was something like. So I made him sound a bit demonic by putting him through a whole bunch of effects. Again, filtered out the bit I wanted uh, first and then shaped it afterwards. So I added a bit of grain delay, which always makes people sound a bit demonic. And it's got the frequency shifter and it kind of a random pitch in, 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 uh, in what he's doing. And then there's a glitch effect called Live Cut, which I love using. Actually, there's Glitch 2 in this one, um, which is just a great effect. Go out and get it, because it's me really great for messing up tracks. Um, so I use Glitch 2 just to mess it up a little bit more. And you can see that see that come in. So we'll yeah. Up the nice clean vocal, uh, and a similar thing with this one, uh, which is a pretty unintelligible vocal sample, but another spoken sample which I just thought I'd add on to the end. And this one, uh, just it's just an empty volume track. Another pick, trick I picked up. Uh, I used the main volumes from to, to for the big volume changes. Um, so if I want to just keep that at, at minus 10, for example, I'll keep it at minus 10. But for more kind of within the track, uh, if I want to change volume up and down uh, at a much, much quicker rate, I use uh, this little rack here. Um, so I can keep change the volume as much as I want within the track, but set the core volume or the max volume with, with the main volume slider here. It's a side note. Um, so that's it. That's my track, really. Uh, you can go and listen to it on cities and uh, citiesandmemory.com. You can download the track from um, soundcloud.com forward slash Tiger Mendoza. Um, and if you like the track, um, let me know. Oh, if you don't like the track, let me know. Or if you like the track, I'd like that more. Um, no, but if hope you found that useful. Hope you found it interesting. Um, I'll make the session downloadable as well, so you can play with it as much as you want. Um, so if you want to remix my remix, then then feel free. It'll be, be great to see what you do with it. Um, so yeah, hope you found that useful. Uh, go check out tigermendoza.co.uk. Go check out the first part of the video if you didn't already. And thanks for listening. Okay, cheers. Bye.